so sympatholytic drugs we have alpha blockers then we have beta blockers right then we have beta blockers so what we have done until now is the alpha blockers now let me continue with the beta blockers if you take the beta blockers beta blockers also we have non selective beta blockers and as well as the selective beta 1 and beta 2 blockers now let me discuss so we have non selective beta blockers and as well as selective beta blockers now you take this non selective beta blockers right now if you take the non selective beta blockers non selective beta blockers these are the first generation beta blockers right these are the first generation beta blockers now if you take the drugs in this particular category right the drugs which are included in this category are we have propranolol which is a non selective beta blocker and apart from propranolol we have timolol then we have nadolol then we have pindolol then we have alprinolol then we have oxprenolol so these are the drugs in this non selective beta blockers right so the examples include propranolol timolol nadolol pindolol alprenolol and oxprenolol now now let me tell you the important effects of these drugs right let me tell you the important effect of right important effects of these drugs so if you take the important effects of these drugs first and foremost you remember here these drugs they will reduce the myocardial oxygen demand right this is a very very important use right myocardial oxygen demand is reduced with this particular group of drugs now how is this myocardial oxygen demand decreased this myocardial oxygen demand is decreased due to blockade of beta 1 receptors right due to blockade of the beta 1 receptors the myocardial oxygen demand is decreased right now this particular principle right this particular principle of the blockade of beta 1 receptors in the heart that is useful in case of classical angina because in patients with classical angina the myocardial oxygen demand is increased in classical angina what will happen is the blood supply to the myocardium is reduced so the oxygen supply to the myocardium is reduced because of reduced blood supply to the myocardium so what you have to do is in order to reduce the myocardial oxygen demand we can give the beta 1 receptor blockers which are present within the heart right beta 1 receptors if they are blocked which are present within the heart the myocardial oxygen demand will be reduced but the disadvantage with this non selective beta blockers non selective beta blockers they will not only block the beta 1 receptors they also block 
the beta 2 receptors as well right they also block the beta 2 receptors now you take this beta 2 receptors now where are these particular the beta 2 receptors present remember this particular beta 2 receptors they are present within the blood vessels when beta 2 receptors are stimulated right the beta 2 receptors which are present within the blood vessels they are stimulated there will be vasodilatation right when the beta 2 receptors which are present within the blood vessels once they are stimulated there will be vasodilatation now a point what you should remember here once the beta 2 receptors are blocked that will result in the coronary vasoconstriction why because if the beta 2 receptors are stimulated there is vasodilatation of the blood vessels but if this particular beta 2 receptors are blocked so blockage of beta 2 receptors will result in coronary vasoconstriction right will result in coronary vasoconstriction is that clear now so because this non-selective beta blockers they are causing coronary vasoconstriction these drugs remember they are contraindicated in variant angina right because of this property they are contraindicated in variant angina now so right they are contraindicated in variant angina now what is this particular variant angina remember variant angina is that clinical condition which is characterized by the coronary vasospasm right variant angina is a clinical condition which is characterized by the coronary vasospasm the variant angina this is also called as the prince metal angina prince metal angina is due to transient coronary vasospasm i'll repeat again the prince metal angina is due to transient coronary vasospasm right and because of this particular transient coronary vasospasm the blood supply to the myocardium is reduced and upon that right upon that patients with variant angina or prince metal angina if you give non selective beta blockers they will further cause the blockade of beta 2 receptors and that will further cause the coronary vasoconstriction and there will be precipitation of the variant angina so that is the reason why in patients with variant angina the non selective beta blockers they are contraindicated all right next let me tell you the other effects of this the beta blockers the other effects of the beta blockers is now these non selective beta blockers they are blocking the beta 1 receptors and that particular principle is used to decrease in the blood pressure of the individual so non selective beta blockers they will cause decrease in the blood pressure of the individual so why is that decrease in the blood pressure this is mainly due to beta 1 blockage right that is mainly due to beta 1 right beta 1 receptor blockade next now let me tell you the other effects of these drugs you take the beta 2 receptors the beta 2 receptors they are present in the bronchus with the help of this non selective beta blockers right with the usage of this non selective beta blockers if there is blockage of the beta 2 receptors which are present within the bronchus that will result in bronchoconstriction right that will result in bronchoconstriction so you see here right if you see here because of the usage of non selective beta blockers the bronchoconstriction may occur this bronchoconstriction this is due to blockade of right this is due to blockade of 
beta 2 receptors right that is due to blockade of beta 2 receptors now because the non selective beta blockers are causing bronchoconstriction because of the blockade of beta 2 receptors remember this particular drugs are contraindicated in patients with bronchial asthma right so these are the drugs which are contraindicated in patients with bronchial asthma right these are contraindicated in patients with bronchial asthma so remember this this is a very very important point next now let me discuss another very important effect you take this non selective beta blockers the problem with the non selective beta blockers is with lipid metabolism these non selective beta blockers they will cause dyslipidemia right this will cause dyslipidemia so dyslipidemia caused by non selective beta blockers that is mainly because of the beta 2 blockade right that is mainly because of the beta 2 blockade and if you take this particular dyslipidemia this dyslipidemia is characterized by increase in ldl and decrease in hdl so what is the dyslipidemia seen with the beta 2 blockade is there will be increase in ldl and decrease in hdl so this is a very important the beta 2 blockade what you have to remember next the apart from the lipid metabolism the non selective beta blockers they also have the discrepancy in the carbohydrate metabolism as well now if you take the beta 2 receptors if the beta 2 receptors are stimulated there will be increase in the blood glucose of the individual i'll repeat again whenever the beta 2 receptors are stimulated there will be increase in the blood glucose of the individual by the process of the gluconeogenesis and as well as glycogenolysis now with the help of non selective beta blockers what are you doing to your beta 2 receptors there is beta 2 blockade so remember because of this beta 2 blockade there is decreased chances of reversal of hypoglycemia in patients on insulin and other hypoglycemic agents remember this point so because of right because of this beta 2 blockade there is decreased chances right there is decreased chances of reversal of hypoglycemia right there is decreased chances of reversal of hypoglycemia in patients on insulin and other oral hypoglycemic agents right in patients on insulin and other oral hypoglycemic agents so this is a very important point what you should remember here okay so the problem is with the lipid metabolism and as well as even with the carbohydrate metabolism whenever you are using the beta 2 blockers the reversal of hypoglycemia will not occur in patients who ever are taking insulin and as well as other oral hypoglycemic agents next the other important effect of this particular beta 2 blockers is these beta 2 blockers they will decrease the production of the aqueous humor and that is the reason why they are useful in the treatment of glaucoma right so the other important effect what you should remember is these beta 2 blockers they will decrease the aqueous humor production so that is the reason why they are used in the treatment of glaucoma right that is the reason why they are used in the treatment of glaucoma so this is a very important point what you should remember is that clear now apart from this there are some more effects let me discuss so before that let me revise the non selective beta blockers 
these are the first generation beta blockers we have many examples like very important drug is the propranolol in that and let me tell you the important effects of these drugs these drugs they will reduce the myocardial oxygen demand that is mainly because of the blockade of the beta 1 receptors and this particular principle is used in the treatment of classical angina and the other thing is these drugs these drugs will cause the beta 2 receptor blockade due to which there is coronary vasoconstriction because of this the non-selective beta blockers are contraindicated in patients with prince metal angina or variant angina and uh, these drugs because of the beta 1 blockade they can reduce the blood pressure of the individual and because of the beta 2 blockade there will be bronchoconstriction so that is why they are contraindicated in patients with bronchial asthma and the effect on the lipid metabolism because of the beta 2 blockade there is dyslipidemia that is increase in LDL and as well as decrease in the HDL of the individual and because of the beta 2 blockade there is also discrepancy in the carbohydrate metabolism so because of the beta 2 blockade there is decreased chances of reversal of hypoglycemia in patients taking insulin and as well as the oral hypoglycemic agents now let me tell you some more important effects of these drugs now let me tell you some more effects of this non-selective beta blockers remember these drugs they will cause impairment of the exercise capacity so there is impaired exercise capacity with this beta blockers now this impaired exercise capacity this is due to blockade of beta 2 receptors right this is due to blockade of the beta 2 receptors which are present in the blood vessels of skeletal muscles right that is due to blockade of the beta 2 receptors in the blood vessels of skeletal muscles next because the beta 2 receptor stimulation in the blood vessels of skeletal muscles will cause vasodilatation and thereby the blood supply to the skeletal muscles are improved whereas if you block the beta 2 receptors which are present within the blood vessels of the skeletal muscles there will be vasoconstriction and there will be reduced blood supply to the skeletal muscle and that will cause impaired exercise capacity next because of the beta 2 blockade there is also abolishment of tremors right this particular abolishment of tremors this is also again because of the blockade of the beta 2 receptors right so whenever the beta 2 receptors are stimulated the individual will have the tremors when these beta 2 receptors are blocked the tremors whatever are there in these individuals they will be reduced so it abolishes the sympathetic tremors right it abolishes the sympathetic tremors now so these are the effects of these non-selective beta blockers